بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فإن أستق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور مهدثاتها وكل مهدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ظلالة وكل ظلالة في النار أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته brothers um, we uh, reach this lesson here or this section of the book um, Last week we uh, completed the first half of the lesson or the subject which was the greatest uh, command that Allah commanded us with is as a tawheed. We talked about that and then uh, now we reach this subject here as you can see the title start of the page. أَعْذَمُ مَا نَهَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ الشِّرْكِ وَأَعْذَمُ مَا نَهَ عَنْهُ الشِّرْكِ so the and and so it's the opposite. So we talked about tawheed, uh, tawheed, and that that's the greatest command that Allah commanders with, and likewise the greatest prohibition that Allah prohibited us from is shirk. So um, uh, we'll we'll complete this lesson inshallah today. <clears throat> so the shaykh continues. We'll just start from here. There's there's a bit of, there's a paragraph here. Uh, still connected to the last lesson, we'll just continue. <clears throat> Let me just go here. We've read this bit, we'll carry on just to the bottom of the page here. Walihada qala shaykh at tawheedu huwa ifradullahi bil ibadati wa laysa huwa ifradullah bil khalqi wa rizki wal ihyai wal imata li anna hada shayun ma'ruf wa la yakfi tawheedu rububiyati fi ta'rifi tawheed. So in this paragraph, the Sheikh says and says, so likewise, just finishing off from uh, last week's lesson, uh, the Sheikh says, and likewise, uh, the original author, he mentions that um, at Tawheed, it is singling out Allah with with worship, with all worship. And it isn't just singling Allah out that uh, with Him, you know, being, uh, you know, the creator uh, and Him being the provider and Him giving life and Him the one who takes life away, giving death, etc. He says, this is because this is well known. This is something that's well known um, uh, with Muslims and non-Muslims, actually. And um, and also, and then the Sheikh says, and so therefore it's not sufficient. Uh, it's not sufficient that we, uh, that Tawheed al which is, this is why is where, where we say Allah is the provider. He takes care of the planet. He uh, the universe, he's in control of everything, he, you know, he sends down the rain, all these sort of things that Allah does and is control of, that um, that is called Tawheed, uh, Tawheed al-Rububiyya, the Tawheed of Lordship. But it doesn't, it's not sufficient just to only believe in uh, the Tawheed of Lordship. Um, and 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 it, it's not, and if you were to say that that is Tawheed, then it's insufficient. And uh, the Sheikh explains further, uh, as uh, as you will do here when we compare and contrast between Shirk and Tawheed here in this lesson. But we, we mentioned this as well. The Sheikh mentioned it in the previous lesson. Then the Sheikh continues, number 18 here. Qawluhu rahimahullah wa'adhamu ma nahallahu an shirk anhu ashirk hadhi fa'idatun azimah li anna ba'da nasi ya'taqiduna anna hunaka asha'u hiya a'adhamu al-jara'im. وأعظم ما نهى الله عنه فيقول الربا هو أعظم المحرمات الزنا هو أعظم المحرمات ولذلك يركزون على النهي عن الربا وعن الزنا وعن فساد الأخلاق ولكن لا يهتمون بأمر الشرك ولا يهذرون منه وهم يرون الناس واقعين فيه فهذا من الجهل العظيم so then the Sheikh mentions here, he says, he mentions the original author's speech, he says, and, may, uh, and his speech, may uh, Allah's mercy be upon him, the greatest, and the greatest prohibition 
that Allah prohibit, uh, prohibit, uh, prohibited us from is shirk. And, and then the Shaykh says, this is a, a great benefit. Why? Because he says some of the people believe that there are things um, which are great, you know, great offences or, you know, great offences or, or felonies or sins. And they uh, and and um and and they believe that these other felonies, crimes, sins, etc., are they see them as very great and above shirk. So, for example, for example, uh, the sheikh strikes some examples for us. He says, for example, a riba, so usury and interest. They they'll see that that is the greatest of the sins, or or they'll say zina, fornication is the greatest of the sins. Or oh, they'll say, if, uh, oh, uh, and, uh, and and the likes of that. And uh, for example, they'll focus their attention upon uh, riba and you know upon uh, uh, using interest and on um, um, fornication and corruption of people's manners, you know, and things like this. Uh, however, uh, they won't pay attention to and give concern uh, to shirk. And they won't warn others from it. And they won't, you know, inform others of it. And and they see, and even though they see the people falling into shirk. So the Sheikh says this is from ignorance, this is from ignorance and, 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 of, of great ignorance. This is an exceptional level of ignorance um, of the Sharia of Allah, of Allah's uh, law, uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then the Shaykh continues, he says, فَأَذَمُ مَنْهَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ هُوَ شِرْكِ فَهُوَ أَذَمُ مِنَ الرِّبَى وَأَذَمُ مِنْ شَرْبِ الْخَمَرِ مِنْ شُرْبِ الْخَمَرِ وَأَذَمُ مِنْ السَّرِقَى وَأَذَمُ مِنْ أَكْلِ أَمْوَالِ النَّاسِ بِالْبَاطِلِ وَأَذَمُ مِنَ الْقِمَارِ وَالْمَيْسِرِ وَأَذَمُ الْمُحَرَّمَاتِ وَالدَّلِيلُ وَقَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى قُلْ تَعَالُوا أَتْلُوا مَا حَرَّمَ رَبُّكُمْ عَلَيْكُمْ أَلَّا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا أَوْلَادَكُمْ مِنْ إِمْلَاقٍ نَحْنُ نَرْزُقُكُمْ وَإِيَّاهُمْ وَلَا تَقْرَبُوا الْفَوَاحِشَ مَا ظَهَرَ مِنْهَا وَمَا بَطَنَ وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا النَّفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ ذَلِكُمْ وَصَاكُمْ بِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَعْقِلُونَ وَلَا تَقْرَبُوا مَالَ الْيَتِيمِ إِلَّا بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنُ إِلَى آخر الآيات وهذه الآيات تسمى بالوصايا لشر قل تعالوا أتلوا ما حرم ربكم عليكم إلى قوله ذلك وصاكم به لعلكم تعقلون هذه المحرمات بدأها الله بقوله أن لا تشركوا به شيئا فدل على أن الشرك هو أعظم ما نهى الله عنه We'll just stop there because that's a long paragraph um, So the Sheikh says The greatest of prohibitions that Allah uh, prohibited us from is shirk. It's greater than usury and interest. It's greater than drinking alcohol. It's greater than stealing. It's greater than eating the wealth of an orphan with uh, in the wrong way. Because just make a note here, uh, in particular circumstances, the guardian can, depending on he fulfills conditions, the guardian of an orphan can use that wealth with good. But we're talking about using it the wrong way. Um, and, uh, and for example, gambling and all this kind of uh, stuff like gambling, um, shirk is greater than gambling as well. And so therefore, shirk is the greatest and the most gravest of sins, it's on the top, it's right at the top. And the evidence is the speech of Allah, which we just read, and we, uh, I believe, we um, read this last week as well. And it's called the Hukuk al Ashar or Wasai al Ashar. Uh, we'll, we'll go through the translation. So, Suratul An'am, verse 151 to 152. Let's read the translation. So um, uh, say, O oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, come, I will recite what your Lord has prohibited you from. Joy not anything in worship with him. Be good and dutiful to your parents. Kill not your children because of poverty. We provide sustenance for you and for them. 
come not near to al-fawahish, shameful sins, illegal sexual intercourse, etc. Whether committed openly or secretly, and kill not anyone whom Allah has forbidden, except for a just cause according to Islamic law. This he has commanded you, that you may understand. And come not near to the orphan's property except to improve it, until he or she attains the age of full strength, and give full measure and full weight with justice. We burden not any person for that which he can bear. And whenever you give your word, I judge between men or give evidence, etc., say the truth, even if a near relative is concerned, and fulfill the covenant of Allah. This he commands you that you may remember. So that we read the whole ayah there, uh, and you can see um, uh, the commandments within the prohibitions. And then the Shaykh uh, mentions to us the very first thing that we're commanded with or prohibited from in this situation, the command, is shirk, Allah tushriku bihi shay'a. So therefore we can see that, and this is in many ayahs as, as, we, as uh, we discussed last week, many ayahs come in this uh, presentation, as you can see, uh, about shirk um, being prohibited. And therefore we can see that it is the greatest of the prohibitions. Then the Shaykh continues and he says, وَفِي سُورَةِ الْإِسْرَاءِ قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى لَا تَجْعَلْ مَا اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخَرَ فَتَقْعُودَ مَذْمُومًا مَخْذُولًا بَدَعَ بِالنَّهِي عَنِ الشِّرْكِ وَخَتَمَهَا بِالنَّهِي عَنِ الشِّرْكِ فَقَالَ وَلَا تَجْعَلْ مَا اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخَرَ فَتُلْقَى فِي جَهَنَّمَ مَلُومًا مَدْحُورًا فدل على أنه أعظم ما نهى الله عنه هذا يدل على قول الشيخ وأعظم ما نهى الله عن الشرك أنه الشرك. so uh, let's just uh, translate that uh, uh, paragraph. we'll go paragraph by paragraph إن شاء الله. so then the sheikh also mentions another surah uh, from the speech of Allah and uh, this is surah al Isra verse twenty two and also mentions from the same surah. Uh, verse 39 as well so let's go there and have a look he mentions and he says with the same kind of meaning let's have a look um, and go to those ayahs so verse 22 we read that set not up with Allah any other ilah God or man this verse is addressed to the Prophet وسلم, but its implication is general to all mankind or you will sit down reproved and forsaken so I'll just read that again because there's some explanation there as well. So, set not up with Allah any other God. And then uh, this has been directed to the Prophet ﷺ and it, its implication is general to all mankind. Uh, and if you do set up a rival with Allah or you set up a God besides Allah, other than Allah, you will sit down reproved, forsaken in the hellfire. And that's clear for us all. And then if we go to the other ayah, Verse 39 This is part of Al-Hikmah Wisdom, good manners and high character etc Which your Lord has inspired to you O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And set not up with Allah any other God Lest you should be thrown into hell Blameworthy and rejected From Allah's mercy So that's clear there as well Let's continue So the Shaykh continues and he says وفي الحديث الصحيح أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم سئل أي ذنب أعظم قال أن تجعل الله ندا أن تجعل الله ندا وهو خلقك قيل ثم أي قال أن تقتل ولدك خشية أن يتعم معك قيل ثم أي قال أن تزاني so then this is a hadith from the Prophet ﷺ. This is the words of the Prophet ﷺ here, hadith. And the reference is here, down here in the in the margin, the bottom margin here, in the footer. Um, from uh, from Sahih al-Bukhari, also in uh, Muslim as well. You can see the references, the numbers. You can check them out yourself. And uh, this was narrated uh, by uh, Ibn Masood radiallahu anhu. So let's... Look at that. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked, what is the greatest sin? And the first thing that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, he said, 
that you set up a rival with Allah and he's the one who created you. So you set up another God besides Allah and he, and he actually he's the one who created you, but then you go and uh, worship other than Allah. Yeah, first, that's the first thing the Prophet ﷺ said, the greatest sin. Then uh, he was asked again, so it goes, then what? And then which one's the next sin after that? Then the Prophet ﷺ said, and that you kill your child fear of uh, not uh, having provisions for them. And as, as, as was mentioned in the other ayah that we had read from the Quran regarding uh, this um, fear of um, not being able to provide provisions or, or seek provisions for your children. So this is a jahiliya practice. It still happens um, uh, where uh, children are killed. Like this. And then the, the Prophet ﷺ was asked, Thumma'i, then what? And then the Prophet ﷺ replied that you um, fornicate with uh, your your uh, your neighbor's uh, female folk, should we say, you know, a woman that 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 uh, in a neighboring home, your neighbor's wife, for example, etc., or partner. Yeah. So we can see that in order. If you look at that, the Sheikh mentioned. You see, in order, you can see that the first thing the Prophet ﷺ said when he was asked, "What is the greatest crime?" It's to do. It's it's shirk. It's shirk. And then, obviously, as we go down, you can see the other sins. Um, grave sins, but but the point being that shirk is the gravest sin, the greatest sin that anybody can commit. Then the Shaykh continues and says, وَأَنزَلَ اللَّهُ تَصْدِيقَ ذَلِكَ فِي قَوْلِهِ وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَدْعُونَ مَا اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخَرَ وَلَا يَقْتُلُونَ النَّفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ وَلَا يَزْنُونَ وَمَنْ يَفْعَلْ ذَلِكَ يَلْقَ أَثَامَ and that's from Surah Al-Furqan, verse uh, 68. فَبَدَأَ بِشِرْكِ فِي قَوْلِهِ أَن We'll just stop there, because that's a new paragraph. So, um, so then if you look at the um, translation of this ayah, uh, yeah. Let's go there, Surah Al-Furqan. If you go to Surah Al-Furqan, verse 68. And those who invoke not any other ilah, God, along with Allah, nor kill such life as Allah has forbidden, except for just cause, nor commit illegal sexual intercourse. And whoever does this shall receive the punishment. So that's clear to us. And then the Sheikh mentions, uh, he mentions the start of the hadith regarding the, the hadith we just mentioned, the Prophet Wasallam. that the first thing that the Prophet Wasallam mentioned was, was shirk, it was to do with shirk. And so that shows us that is the greatest sin. And because he began, when he was asked what is the greatest sin, uh, he began with shirk, which shows us clearly, with any with the sound intellect, it's clear that shirk is the greatest sin. And then we mentioned the ayah that also complements that as well. The speech of Allah, which we just read as well, complements that. So then, let's go to uh, the next paragraph here. وَقَالَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ اجتنبوا, اجتنبوا السبع الموبقات قيل وما هن يا رسول الله قال الشرك بالله والسحر وقتل النفس التي حرم الله إلا بالحق إلى, 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 خل, أو إلى آخر الحديث Okay, so... <coughs> Then uh, the Shaykh mentions here um, another hadith um, with regards to uh, what we just mentioned here, and that is um, uh, the hadith about uh, where the Prophet ﷺ said, stay away from or avoid the seven destroyers or destructive sins or destroyers or grave sins. You can use different words for it, but we get the idea. Uh, uh, the seven destroyers, should we say, that would destroy you. <laughs> so... Um, and, uh, the, and then the Shaykh mentions the starting of the hadith. So he, the Prophet was asked, uh, and what are they? So when the Prophet says, avoid the seven destroyers or the ones that are just destructive sins, um, it was said uh, to the Prophet, and what are they? And one of the Sahab asked, so what are they? So that they can know. And the Prophet said, he began, he said, a shirk billah, so having, uh, uh, committing shirk with Allah, magic, right? And then obviously magic, getting involved with magic. Uh, and then killing yourself, so suicide, um, etc. Until 
to the end of the hadith. So the Sheikh doesn't mention the rest of the hadith because we're focusing on um, the greatest sin here in this chapter, uh, which then the Sheikh clarifies and says that, as you can see, that the greatest sin, the first thing that's mentioned, the greatest of those destroys, the greatest sin which we established already, some more proof for us here, is shirk. Um, but we'll mention a side point, if you can, here uh, regarding sihr as well. So a sihr is not just the person who's performing the sihr, but it's the one who goes to the magician as well. Right? They all come under the same ruling. And then um, the shaykh continues and he says, Bada'aha bishirk fadala ala anna shirka hu a'zam al-dhunub. Walidhalika fa'inna al-mushrika la, la yadkhulu al-jannata abadan. قال تعالى إنه من يشرك بالله فقد حرم الله عليه الجنة ومأواه النار وما للظالمين من أنصار المشرك لا يغفر الله له إن الله لا يغفر أن يشرك به ويغفر ما دون ذلك لمن يشاء فدل ذلك على تحريم الجنة على المشرك وأن الله لا يغفر له ودل هذا على أن الشرك أعظم الذنوب لأن الذنوب ما عدا الشرك ما عدا الشرك قابلة للمغفرة إن الله لا يغفر أن يشرك به ويغفر ما دون ذلك لمن يشاء فالزنا والسرقة وشرب الخمر والربا كله داخل تحت المشيئة إن شاء الله غفر <تصفيق> من أول وهلة ويدخل الجنة وإما أن يخرج من النار بعد تأذيبه ويدخل الجنة المؤمن مهما كان منه من الفسق والمعاصي التي دون الشرك فإنه لا يقنط من رحمة الله ولا يحرم, يحرم من الجنة وهو داخل تحت, وهو وهو داخل تحت المغفرة أو وهو داخل تحت المغفرة بمشيئة الله سبحانه وتعالى. So that's a long paragraph. So let's just go through that step by step. So then the Sheikh he says so from what we read earlier, um, the Sheikh says so the, the Prophet ﷺ started with shirk. So and so going back to referring to that being the greatest sin, greatest crime, greatest sin. For, so so you know. It began with shirk and that points towards and proves to us that it's the greatest of sins. And therefore, uh, shirk, it says, and for that reason, and, and therefore, uh, that, that shirk, whoever, whoever commits shirk, sorry, whoever commits shirk and is upon shirk does not enter Jannah, will never enter Jannah. And that's with the speech of Allah, which we read in Arabic, and we'll go through the translation now. So let's go to the first uh, uh uh, citation here which is uh, in Surah Al-Ma'idah so uh, let's go there Surah Al-Ma'idah verse um, 72 we'll read the whole ayah surely they have disbelieved who say Allah is the Messiah uh, Isa Jesus son of Maryam but the Messiah Isa Jesus said O children of Israel worship Allah my Lord and your Lord verily whosoever sets up partners in worship with Allah then Allah has forbidden paradise for him and the fire will be his abode. And for the Zali moon, the polytheists and wrongdoers, there are no helpers. So that's clear. That's very clear there for us. Then the next ayah is uh, cited, from, uh, was cited from Surah An-Nisa, so the surah before, uh, and that's verse 48. Verily Allah forgives not that partners should be set up with him in worship, but he forgives except that anything else to whom he pleases. And whoever sets up partners with Allah in worship, he has indeed invented a tremendous sin. Okay, so that's been mentioned. And then the Shaykh mentions here, uh, as we just go further down below the ayah here, he mentions that this shows, this points us towards that the one who is upon shirk, this greater shirk, this shirk, it takes him out of the fall of Islam and he is prohibited from entering Jannah. 
and and this the other this ayah that we just read now the translation of shows us that Allah forgives any other sin to whom he wills but he does not forgive shirk if somebody dies upon shirk in this world and dies upon it and doesn't ask forgiveness then he is in the hellfire forever uh, he cannot enter the, uh, paradise he can't enter jannah he can't enter heaven so then the shaykh breaks down a bit more in detail regarding uh, the, uh, the ayah where we mentioned that Allah forgives can choose to forgive anything except shirk and the shaykh says for example when the person uh, you know is being uh, accounted for uh, and being accounted uh, in terms of sins good deeds and bad deeds and uh, you know these are accounted for the the bad deeds then Allah is up to Allah it's Allah's will if he decides to um, forgive this person that particular person's sins it's up to him or what might happen also is that he Allah may not uh, may not decide to forgive his sins right that are other than shirk of course uh, and instead he'll be thrown into the hellfire and be purified there and then he will enter uh, heaven so the person so the sheikh says the person that doesn't commit shirk um uh, even though he might have committed other sins but he's a muslim he dies upon islam and he's upon tawheed then he will eventually enter heaven either if allah decides that he forgives him after accounting being accounted for and being taken to account he may enter heaven straight away or uh, it may be decided allah may, may decide in that situation up to allah then the day will decide um uh, if he needs to be purified he or she needs to be purified and they'll be thrown to the fire purified for a period of time depending on the sins etc circumstances and then they will be thrown into uh, into paradise so the sheikh mentions that and so obviously uh, this is clarifying to us um, uh, that uh, the severity of shirk and um, just another side point I don't think the sheikh mentioned it I'll just mention it here before I carry on reading um, that um, uh, the scholars say that whoever commits any kind of major sin and there's over 70 odd there's a lot of major sins that we're not aware of and um, it's worth going through a book called uh, uh, the major sins inshallah one day we will go through them inshallah or you can i think there's an english book as well you can get it about major sins i think the uh, author is uh, imam al-zahabi uh, major sins book on major sins and um uh, the sheikhs the, the scholars mentioned that a person who uh, commits a major sin uh, that uh, usually in most cases from from the understanding is that the person will be uh, purified in the hellfire but at the end of the day look we looked at this uh, the ayah and what the scholar saying here uh, that anything other than shirk if Allah decides he can forgive it uh, but obviously we shouldn't just um, run away with that and say look you know at the end of the day I'm upon Tawheed and I'm committing these other sins but I'm not committing shirk so I'll be alright you know don't do that um you know, at the end of the day, if we all make mistakes and if we fall into a mistake, you know, straight away you ask Allah for forgiveness and, you know, you be remorseful and uh, and you try not to go back to that. You know, everybody falls into mistakes. We all do, you know. So uh, we just got to make sure that we don't think we've got a free ticket there, you know. And just, okay, I'll do everything else and I'll do what I want. But as long as I don't do shirk, I'll be all right. That's the wrong path to go down. <clears throat> so then the shirk continues and um, he just mentions what we mentioned. So um, he finishes that paragraph there which is what we mentioned, I translate for you brothers. Uh, so let's continue. Uh, the Shaykh continues and he says, أَمَّا الْمُشْرِكُ فَإِنَّهُ مَحْرُومٌ مِنْ ذَلِكَ كُلِّهِ وَلِيَادُ بِاللَّهِ فَدَنْلَا عَلَى عَلَى أَنَّ الشِّرْكَ هُوَ عَذَمَ الْذُنُوبِ قَالَ تَعَلَى إِنَّ الشِّرْكَ لَظُلْمٌ عَظِيمٌ So then the Shaykh says, so the Mushrik, the one who is upon shirk, major shirk, then he is prohibited from uh, from uh, from Jannah, uh, and we seek refuge in Allah. He says, and then uh, he says, and so this uh, po- uh, points us or shows us that uh, shirk it is the greatest of the sins. And then the Sheikh brings another ayah from Surah Luqman, and if we go there, we read the ayah and remember when Luqman said to his son when he was advising him, "Oh my son." Join not in worship others with Allah. Verily, joining others in worship with Allah is a great dhulm, a great wrong indeed. 
So that, that's another evidence for us as well. So let's continue to the next paragraph. وَقَالَ سُبْحَانُهُ So another, and then so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as, as also mentioned here, وَمَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ إِفْتَرَى إِثْمًا عَظِيمًا وَمَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ ظَلَّ ظَلَالٌ بَعِيدًا And there's some more evidences. So this is from Surah An-Nisa verse 48. Let's see if I document it here. It's from the same surah that we read. Yeah, so very Allah forgives not the partner should be settled with him in worship, but he forgives except that anything else to whom he pleases. And whoever sets up partners with Allah in worship, he has indeed invented a tremendous sin. We mentioned that earlier, didn't we? Um, and these guys are of the, of, 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 you know, they carry the same message as we can see. Um, so the Shaykh continues, says, كُلُّ هَذَا يَدُلُّ وَلَا أَنَّ شِرْكَ عَذَمَ الظُّنُومِ وَإِذَا كَانَ شِرْكَ عَذَمَ الظُّنُومِ فَإِنَّهُ يَجِبُ وَلَا الْعُلَمَاءُ وَالْمُتَعْلِمِينَ النَّحْيُ عَنْهُ وَتَحْذِيرُ مِنْهُ وَأَنْ لَا يَسْكُتُوا عن التَّحْذِيرُ مِنْ الشِّرْكِ وَأَنَّهُ يَجِبُ جِهَادُ الْمُشْرِكِينَ مَعَ الْقُدْرَةِ كَمَا جَاهَدُوا كَمَا جَاهَدَهُمْ الرَّسُولُ اللَّهُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ So the Shaykh says, look, all of this shows us that the greatest sin is shirk. The greatest of crimes and of sins is shirk. Um, and so therefore it's obligatory upon uh, the scholars and knowledgeable ones and the ones who know and learn about this and are aware of this, that they um, that they uh, that they prevent shirk from occurring for wherever they can, however they can, they you know uh, uh, prevent shirk from occurring uh, uh, and uh, and become a reality. Also, that they warn others of it. You know, don't fall into shirk. You know, oh, you might see somebody, or oh, uh, you know, doing something that they don't know. Then you educate them and you, you you tell them in a nice way. Look, you know, in the Quran, Allah says this. The Prophet said this, uh, and so. You know, this is shirk, and or it's a type of shirk, and stay away from it is what Allah had um, uh, has uh, prohibited us from, and it's a greatest sin. And we could, we've already established here, all of here, that how great the sin actually is, and and you know, if you die upon it, if you die upon it, it's 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 essentially so it's, it's over, it's over. It, 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 well, I mean, the word use, you're finished. We will we'll be finished if we all those guys here now. In this group, we're having this lesson. If we didn't know what shirk was, we were living upon shirk. And we've already established earlier on as well in the start of this uh, book that it's obligatory to know what tawheed and what shirk is. We must know it's the central tenet of our deen. And we need to know what it is. And then we never bothered learning, even though it was obligatory and farad upon us to learn. Then we die upon shirk, not knowing that we're committing it. It won't be uh, forgiven, as we've established here, you know, from the Quran and the Sunnah. And so um, it's very, very important. So the Shaykh continues and he says, uh, so therefore we shouldn't stay quiet when we see shirk, you know, we, he's saying that we shouldn't stay quiet and, you know, we should warn others and educate them, you know, uh, and uh, free, uh, free of them. And, and, and uh, he, he mentions the example here as well that like how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did, you know, warn about and he fought the, uh, uh, the mushrikun and fought against the ideologies as well, you know, physically and also with ideologies because they were upon shirk and they were committing crimes against Allah you know and um, and came to guide them and to warn them yeah so, and you know he was calling to Allah uh, so you know obviously with good news the good news of you know follow you know worship Allah worship Allah upon Tawheed you know all the rules that came along as well and the warning of shirk and his graveness you know, shirk and dying upon kufr and upon shirk, then you're, you get, you end up in the hellfire. So you can see that uh, uh, the way of the Prophet and the and the seerah, uh, uh, you know, the background of the Prophet is always important that we learn that as well and we know what happened and what the companions were upon, what the tabin were upon, and all up until this day, those people upon the son of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Then the Shaykh continues says, "Qala taala faqtulu al mushrikina haythu wajatumuhum." وَخُذُوهُمْ وَحْصُرُوهُمْ وَقُدُوا لَهُمْ كُلَّ مرصاد. So that's from Surah Tawbah. Let's just go through that. So the Sheikh says, فَيَجِبُ تَحَذِيرٍ مِنَ الشِّرْكِ وَبِيَانِ لِلنَّاسِ حَتَّى يَجْتَنِبُوا هَذَا الَّذِي يَجِبُ So, so the Sheikh mentions that it's obligatory upon us to uh, warn people from shirk uh, and to stop it where we can. So uh, let's go to uh, the, that Surah Tawbah verse 5. 
Let's we'll read the whole ayah. Uh, and when the sacred months, the first, the seventh, eleventh, and twelfth months of the Islamic calendar have passed, then kill the mushrikun wherever you find them and capture them and besiege them and prepare for them each and every ambush. For if they repent and perform a salah, iqamat a salah, and give zakat, then leave their way free. Verily, Allah is oft forgiven, most merciful. So the main point here is a warning uh, people from shirk and um, uh, and pe making people aware of it and, and stopping it where it's possible to stop shirk. And in in that way, you're doing a great favor to the to, to to those that person or those people. You're doing them a great favor. It's a great favor because uh, you're helping them to avoid hellfire. So then the shirk continues says, "Amma." أما أن يسكت عن الشرك أن يسكت عن عن الشرك أو يسكت يسكت عن الشرك ويترك الناس يهيمون في في إبادة غير الله وهم يدعون الإسلام ولا أحد ولا أحد ينها ولا أحد يحذر يحذر فالأمر خطير جدا هناك ناس يتجهون إلى النهي عن الربا والزنا وفساد الأخلاق هذه أمور هذه أمور محرمة وفيها فساد لكن الشرك لا لكن الشرك أعظم فلماذا لا يهتم بالنهي عن الشرك والتحذير من الشرك وبيان وبيان ما يقع فيه كثير من الناس في الشرك الأكبر وهم يدعون الإسلام. So then the Sheikh mentions here he says as for uh, uh, you know, being quiet upon it and not saying anything. So, when if you say if you see shirk is occurring and you just, you know, turn away and don't bother saying anything, turn a blind eye to it, um, or uh, you leave the people on the on the way that of their worship. For example, they're committing shirk and just leave them upon it, and they are, you know, claiming that they're upon Islam, and nobody is uh, prohibiting, uh, and and nobody is warning. And prohibiting a shirk, then the affair is very dangerous. It says there are people who are who uh, you know uh, talk about or you know uh, point towards, let's say, they d direct towards or turn to uh, prohibitions of, for example, the prohibitions of a uh, huge interest, you know, fornication, you know, corruption of manners. Um, uh, and, and the likes of these affairs, and no doubt, uh, these are haram and prohibited as well, and in his corruption. However, the Sheikh says shirk is greater, as we've established. Shirk is the greatest sin that can commit. So why, why is it being left off? Why is shirk being left off? Why aren't people being concerned about shirk and warning people about shirk it being the greatest sin, and it's right? And obviously clarifying uh, what is a reality in a lot of, or in many people that they are committing or falling into shirk al-akbar, the greatest shirk, and they are claiming Islam. So you see the, what the, the point that the shirk is making there is quite clear. So the shirk continues and he says, لماذا هاد تساهل في أمر الشرك والتغافل عنه وترك الناس يقعون فيه والعلماء موجودون بل يعيشون مع هؤلاء ويسكتون عنهم الواجب أن يتجه أولا إلى النهي عن هذا الخطر العظيم الذي فتك بالأمة فتكا ذريعا كل ذنب دونه فهو أهون منه والواجب أن يبدأ أن يبدأ بالأهم فالأهم So then the Sheikh is basically saying here so why all of this easiness in terms of shirk and this heedlessness of shirk? Why this easy? No, just somebody's coming. Oh, yeah, well, you know, it's all right. Okay. Or the heedlessness, you know, to shirk or with regards to shirk that, and the people are falling into it. And for example, the scholars are present, you know, in the lands where the scholars are present. And they are living with, uh, amongst those people, and they are quiet about it. The Sheikh says, he says, therefore, it's obligatory that we turn out, first of all, turn towards um, uh, the prohibition, the greatest, the most dangerous prohibition, which we all know is shit, because it can just destroy the nation, the Ummah. It can destroy it, 
and just send it in a in one way, let's say in a big black hole, it is a, a destruction. And and that we're knowing and that we know that every other sin other than shirk, you know, it's that's actually um not a big deal in regards to when we're we're talking about shirk here. Obviously every sin we need to avoid it, but you need to look we need to look at what's greater. So the Sheikh's making the point that shirk that needs to be stamped out. Um and we need to put everything in its rightful place. Then the Sheikh continues, so number nineteen, this paragraph is starting from here. هذا تعريف الشرك هو دعوة غيره ما هو بمعنى أن أن يصرف شيء من الإبادة لغير الله من ملك من الملائكة أو نبي أو نبي من الأنبياء أو صالح من الصالحين أو بنية من البنيات أو غير ذلك من كل مخلوقات فمن صرف شيئا من الإبادة لغير الله فهذا هو أعظم ما نهى الله عنه هذا هو الشرك so then the Sheikh says, he says, he says so, that, so we're moving on to the next part of this uh, chapter, and that is the definition, the definition of uh, shirk. And uh, the Sheikh, he mentions here, he says that uh, we know what Tawheed is, so we've learned what a Tawheed is, so what we, we can probably ourselves think about knowing what Tawheed is, we know what shirk is now as well, because it's the complete opposite of Tawheed. So if you look at what the Sheikh says, he says, um, so meaning that you're so you're worshiping Allah, but at the same time you also um, are calling on worshiping something else or somebody else. Meaning that you're taking away that that worship that should only be for Allah. So remember, ikhlas is only for Allah. It should be only for Allah, purely for Allah, but you're taking that away and mixing it, and you're then sharing that worship with other than Allah. You're taking it away, right, from its rightful owner, yeah? And you then are uh, directing it towards other things, other beings, other um, objects and things, which we mentioned before previously. So the Shaykh gives us some examples. He says, it could be min malakin min al malaika, so it could be from an angel from the angels. For example, people might and probably do, yeah, they worship Jibrail, for example, alayhi salam. They might worship him, yeah. Or it could be from the uh, uh, from the prophet of of the prophets. So it could be a prophet from the prophets. It could be a righteous person from the righteous ones. It could be a building, a construct. So it could be uh, something like that, and the likes of these examples. And we covered this before, so we won't. Um, uh, spend too much time on that so we can see the definition so the sheikh mentions then he says so whoever um, takes whoever directs his worship to other than Allah or shares his worship with other than Allah uh, then he uh, 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 then he has committed shirk and therefore it is from the greatest prohib and we know also that that shirk is uh, uh, the greatest uh, sin and prohibition that Allah prohibited us from, and this is what shirk is. And the shirk breaks it down further. So uh, stay with me. It will go a little bit longer, inshallah, and finish this chapter. We haven't got much to go. So um, then the shirk mentions. Let's go back here. Let's go up here. Right there we are. The shirk says. فعرف تفسير التوحيد وتفسير الشرك لأن هناك من الناس من يفسر التوحيد بغير تفسيره ومن ومن يفسر الشرك بغير تفسيره. so the sheikh says so know that that uh, so know the explanation uh, and the meaning of التوحيد and likewise know the meaning and explanation of shirk because he says there are people right there are people who who explain away and define Tawheed, which is far from its actual meaning. And likewise, they explain away what Shirk is, and it's far from the truth and the actual meaning of Shirk. Uh, of shirk. So he says, so be aware, you know, we need to be aware of this. And so the Shirk continues and he says, مِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُونَ إِنَّ شِرْكَ هُوَ الشِرْكُ في الحاكمية وهذا ظهر الآن مع الأسف الحكم 
بغير ما أنزل الله نوع من أنواع الشرك يسمى شرك الطاعة يسمى شرك الطاعة لا شك أتاعة المخلوق في تحليل ما حرم الله أو تحريم ما أحل الله هذا نوع من الشرك لكن هناك ما هو أعظم منه وهو عبادة غير الله بالذبح والنظر والطواف والاستغاثة فالواجب أن يحذر من الشرك كله لا يؤخذ منه ويترك ما هو أعظم وأخطر منه فلا يفسر الشرك بأنه شرك الحاكم فقط أو الشرك السياسي ويقولون الشرك بالقبور هذا شرك ساذج أي هين هذه جراعة على الله سبحانه وتعالى الشرك أعظم ما نهى الله عنه وهو دعوة غيره معه هذا هو الشرك We'll just stop there for a second. So then the shaykh, he says, so there's people, they say that shirk, it's, uh, they'll define shirk. So, so the shaykh is going to explain now to us um, the erroneous um, definitions of shirk, or some of the erroneous ones. There's many, but some of the er erroneous ones. So we can, we can understand it from a, from a different perspective, yeah? So the shaykh mentions, he says, uh, that some of, of those, they say, indeed, shirk, it is, uh, it is, it is shirk. It's only shirk in uh, rulings or passing down judgments in a hukum or a law. And and the shirk says that this has um, become was manifest and apparent uh, in our time. Or uh, the shirk around. So you know, obviously, in our time, you know, was, this is actually it's 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 well known uh, that in this erroneous definition is widespread. And the Sheikh says that this is uh, uh, basically uh, uh, judging or ruling uh, uh, without uh, or ru ruling with other than what Allah had sent down. And they say that this is a uh, this is this is a type from the types of shirk. They call it shirk ta. And the Sheikh says, but no doubt that um, obedience or uh, or being obedient to the creation. In uh, uh, in making what Allah has made haram, making halal, and the other way around as well. That of course, this is from the types of shirk. Of course, that is. But he says that, but there 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 is what's greater than that as well, and that is worshiping other than Allah. So so worshiping something else other than Allah, or sharing worship, which is actually shirk of ibadah, shirk of ibadah, yeah. So he mentions, for example, you um, sacrificing a rub, sacrificing an animal, for example, let's say goat, sheep, whatever, sheep, you sacrifice it to other than Allah. You, you sacrifice a chicken, whatever, to other than Allah. This is greater. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, one another. So, you know, you're calling an oath. Another is oath. So making an oath to other than Allah. People do this, uh, making tawaf, circumambulating. Uh, um, for example, and I think the Sheikh's meaning here that, uh, for example, people circumambulating a grave, for example, right? Circumambulating a qabr, going round and round, right? And that's worship. But who's qabr? You know, who, who's in the the dead person worshiping a dead person, right? It could be as well. Um, Person circumambulating the Kaaba, so he's doing tawaf uh, Kaaba, around the Kaaba, and 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 but he may be directing his worship to other than Allah, you know, yeah, and then seeking aid and help with other than Allah. All these things are greater because they direct worship, right? For, so the Sheikh says that that this should be warned, warned from, and should be avoided, and we, we should warn all of these. Types of things you need to be warned from. You need to warn people from it. You don't just take a bit from it and then you leave the other. Uh, and uh, you know what's greater and what's more dangerous. So he says. He says here. So we don't just. Um, so it's not. So you shouldn't explain shirk. That it's just shirk in terms of taking uh, a judgment that isn't from the Quran or the Sunnah, for example, only. Rad, uh, or just say, oh, it's shirk siyasi, for example, that's related to uh, politics, for example. 
uh, and you know controlling people and, and you know governing you know all this sort of thing. Uh, uh, and and then the Sheikh brings an example. He says and uh, and some of the people also say that uh, Shirk uh, committing Shirk uh, with you know with the, obviously with the graves is a uh, is a uh, Shirk sad. Oh, it's just it's it's easy. It's, it's 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 a light affair. It's not a big deal. Basically, I'll, I'll probably say it's not a big deal. It's not much of a problem. They are lightening what is actually a dangerous affair, and uh, and it's and it's a great and it's the greatest sin that Allah has prohibited us from. And so we've established now that what shirk actually is, yeah. So uh, that'll help us. So then the shirk continues. He says, "Wa minhum man yaqul." الشرك هو محبة الدنيا هو هو محب محبة الدنيا ومحبة المال المال جعله الله محبوبا حبا طبيعيا. so then the sheikh mentions here that so so some another example other people some of them say that shirk is is loving the dunya and loving mal loving wealth any kind of wealth loving the dunya and loving wealth but the Sheikh mentions that wealth, Allah has made it to be loved. But the love is the natural kind of love that people have to it, right? Then the Sheikh explains it in more detail. So he mentions the Quran ayah here, and he mentions he says, وَتُحِبُّونَ الْمَالَ حُبًّا جَمَّا So that's from Surah Al-Fajr, verse 20. وَإِدْنَهُ لِحُبِّ الْخَيْرِ that's from Surah Al-Adiyat. Yes, yeah, so uh, we'll go to it. And a meaning, وَإِنَّهُ لِحُبِّ الْخَيْرِ is, is point, It means, it's pointing towards mal, wealth. La shadid, you know, with, with, you know, severely loving it. Yeah? Um, also, another ayah, قُلْ إِنْ كَانَ آبَاؤُكُمْ وَأَبْنَاؤُكُمْ إِلَىٰ قَوْلِهِ أَحَبَّ إِلَيْهِ So the, the, this is another ayah, the Sheikh mentions of starting of it and towards the ending point from Surah Tawbah. So let's go through... Um, these to help us understand uh, a bit better. So the first is mentioned in Surah Al-Fajr. So let's go there. Surah Al-Fajr, verse 20. And you love wealth with much love. Right? And then let's go to Surah Al-Adiyat. That's verse 8. And verily he is violent in the love of wealth. And then the next surah, Surah Tawbah, if we go so, uh, to Surah Tawbah, uh, Tawbah here, verse 24. Let's just read the whole ayah, okay? So up to the point where the shaykh stopped. He says, say, if your fathers, your sons, your brothers, your wives, your kindred, the wealth that you have gained, the commerce in which you fear the decline, and the dwellings in which you delight, are dearer to you than Allah and his messenger, and striving hard, and fighting in his cause, then wait until Allah brings about his decision, torment, and Allah guides not the people who are al-fasiqoon, the rebellious, disobedient to Allah. So we can see that what's being said there. That's clear for us. So the shaykh continues and he says, Qal, so he's, gonna, he's going to explain further about love here, uh, and how we understand it properly, and uh, make sure that we don't fall into any doubts. So the shaykh says, Qala, ahabba ilaykum ma أنكر عليهم أنهم يحبونه لكن أنكر عليهم أنهم يقدمون محبته على محبة الله محبة المال ليست شركا لأن هذه محب لأن هذه محبة طبيعية الناس يحتاجون إلى المال ويحبون محبة المال ليست شركا لأنه من محبة المنافع التي ينتفع بها الإنسان. So let's just hold on there. So the Sheikh says. He said, in the ayah is mentioned, Ahabba ilaykum, what's more beloved to you. So it, uh, love itself fully wasn't disavowed in that way. That all, any kind of love is, it's, it's shirk. No. Uh, the shirk mentions here, that, uh, the reason why it was said, mentioned here is because the ones who, um, Put money and wealth before everything else, so they they put they put the love of wealth before Allah and His Messenger. The, you know, you see that they put that first. That's the reason why. That's there. There's a warning there from that 
but it's not shirk. The shaykh, the shaykh says that loving wealth is not shirk. Because loving wealth in that way is uh, is natural. Because people need it. People need wealth to spend, to live the life, etc. Um, and, and therefore, it's not shirk. But people wrongfully explain it and say it's shirk. It's not. And the shaykh says, because he says that wealth brings about benefit. Uh, and, and we benefit from it. And humankind, humans, they benefit. Insan, they benefit from this. And then the Sheikh continues, and he says, لَكِنْ هَؤُلَى الَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ هَذِي الْمَقَالَاتِ إِمَّا أَنَّهُمْ جُهَالْ لَمْ يَتَعَلَّمُوا التَّوْحِيدَ وَشِرْكَ وَإِمَّا أَنَّهُمْ مُؤْلِذُونَ يُرِيدُونَ صَرْفَ النَّاسِ عَنْ هَذِهِ الْحَقَائِقِ إِلَى أَشْيَاءَ هُمْ يُرِيدُونَهَا وَمَآرِبْ يُرِيدُونَهَا وَاللَّهُ أَعْلَمُ بِالْمَقَاصِدِ so then the shaykh says that the people who actually say this, that uh, one who loves wealth is shirk, um, just outfully, just like that, then that these uh, types of uh, sayings and what they say is either the person is an ignorant one or hasn't learned what tawheed and what shirk is. Uh, as for, the, uh, or, or in terms of, uh, or it could be that they just want they want to turn people away. Uh, they want to turn people away from the realities um, um, of the realities. And they want to turn them towards something else that they want, their goals, their intentions. And then the Sheikh says, um, but Allah knows best with regards to their intentions. So the Sheikh continues and he says, Al-Muhim, anna hadha isa wa shirk, shirk huwa da'watu ghayri lahi ma'ahu. أو صرف صرف شيء من أنواع الإبادة لغير الله كذبه والنظر والدعاء والاستغاثة والاستيانة والالتجاء والخوف والرجاء وغير ذلك هذا هو الشرك الذي هو عظم الذنوب دعوة غير معه سبحانه وتعالى لأن الدعاء هو أعظم أعظم أنواع أعظم أنواع الإبادة كما قال سبحانه له دعوة الحق والذين يدعون من دون يدعون من دونه لا يستجيبون لهم بشيء وقال فدع فدع الله مخلصين له الدين ولو كره الكافرون فدعاء غير الله هو الشرك الذي حرم الله ورسوله أما هذه الجزئيات التي يجعلونها هي الشرك فليس كذلك لكن يقال إن بعضها جزء من الشرك وإن هناك وإن هناك ما هو أخطر منه وأهم منه لأن الشرك يتفاوت بعضه أشد من بعض والياض بالله. So the Sheikh is mentioned what we've already mentioned the starting of this paragraph. So we won't go through that. Um, but the Sheikh mentions here uh, with regards to du'a. So we did mention that earlier on. So for example, if somebody makes du'a to other than Allah, makes a supplication to other than Allah, then it's uh, it, this is shirk, and from the greatest forms of ibadah is a supplication. It's from the greatest forms of ibadah. It's uh, a dua, and the sheikh mentions an ayah, which you all can have a look at uh, uh, in your own time. Here, uh, take a note of it: Surah to Rad, verse fourteen, and Surah to Ghafir, verse fourteen. So you can have a look at that in your own spare time. Maybe some homework, inshallah. You can have a look at the tafsir of that yourselves as well. Um, so then the sheikh mentions. So those who come with these different examples that are incorrect, that we need to be aware of them and we need to know what actually is more dangerous uh, and that is, um, um, you know, committing shirk with Allah in terms of ibadah, in ibadah, right? And so he says that, you know, uh, certain actions are worse than others. So you put everything in its rightful place and things differ as well. So we need to understand it properly. Then the Shaykh mentions another ayah, he says, قوله والدليل قوله تعالى وعبد الله ولا تشركه به شيئا And we mentioned this ayah last week, and we know what that means, worship Allah and do not associate any partners in worship with Him. Don't associate anything with Him. And uh, and he says, we said, uh, and, and Shaykh says, we said, إن الدليل على أن أعظم ما أمر الله به هو التوحيد قوله وعبد الله ولا تشركه به شيئا ثم ذكر بقية الحقوق فكونه بدأ بالتوحيد والنحي عن الشرك هذا دليل على أن التوحيد هو أعظم ما أمر الله به لأنه قال واعبد الله واتبعه بقوله ولا تشرك به شيئا فهذا نهي فبدأ الأمر بالتوحيد ف 
فبدا الامر بالتوحيد والنهي عن الشرك فدل على ان اعظم ما امر الله به التوحيد واعظم ما نهى عنه الشرك لان الله بدا بذلك ولا يبدا سبحانه الا بالاهم فالاهم هذا وجه الدلاله من الايه so we finish this uh, topic now it took a little bit longer but it was important to finish it um so the sheikh finishes off here and uh, he wraps up and summarizes from last week's lesson and this one which we just finished now and he says and the evidence also uh, of the ayah wa'budullaha wa la tushriku bihi shay'a and he mentions that that allah first he mentions with which is tawhid worship allah worship allah alone and do not associate any partners with him in worship the sheikh says this is the dalil this is the evidence that that shows us that a tawhid is the most important commandment that we've been commanded with and that to, uh, that shirk is the greatest prohibition that we've been prohibited from doing and falling into then the rest of the hukuk and the rights come after that when we the long ayah that we read at the earlier stages of this lesson and last week as well the one that they call it wasa al ashara or hukuk al ashar and uh, um you can refer back to the ayah yourselves um so you can see what's been mentioned and the sheikh says why do we know because he says allah always mentions the most important thing first so he says the most important thing that we should be concerned allah mentions it first what did he mention mentioned at tawhid that we should be upon tawhid and we should live our lives upon tawhid and that at the same time uh, in the same at the start of the ayah that we should avoid shirk and stay away from shirk yeah and just like the ahadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that we went through as well that uh istanibu sab al mawbiqat and the first one uh, that was mentioned was shirk a shirk or an taj'al al niddan yeah so that we went through so you can go back and have a look at that yourselves again and if you need to review anything but alhamdulillah uh, we finished that lesson and uh, we will start the next lesson next week uh, jazakumullah khair so if anybody has any questions you can just send them if you need to ask anything or need a clarification on anything otherwise inshallah um, we will um, reconvene the lesson um, uh, in the coming uh, yawm al jumu'ah and uh, al, um, at uh, 8:15 inshallah um bismillah ta'ala subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik hamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta wa astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh